Hi, I'm Dave from boyinaband.com and welcome to day one of my seven day song on modern dirty dubstep, where I'll be going through the process of making a powerful subwoofer-tastic tune over seven days. At the end, I'll post the finished song and you guys can post your completed songs as video responses. Dubstep is that bass heavy genre that absolutely exploded in popularity recently. And since I made my first seven day song on dubstep, the genre has evolved considerably. So I thought it was time to look at some of the dirtier basses, the heavier drums, and the more powerful instrumentation, such as pads effects, the change in conventional structure and mixing and mastering in the newer genre. I'll also try and keep you in the loop with some bits of music theory as we go along. This is the 11th 7 day song, so be sure to check out the other ones too. And also I encourage you to post your tracks on the Boyna Band forum and share your music, make some friends and learn more about production. So let's get on with day one of the tutorial, where I'll be teaching you how to make a heavy driving dubstep beat with techniques like parallel compression, EQing, regular old compression and layering with Kong. Okay, let's begin. So first things first, we're going to change the tempo down here to 140, which is the tempo of most dubstep. I'm going to chuck in an M-Class Mastering Suite Combi and we're going to bypass it for now so we can get a good mix without the master since mastering changes the overall mix considerably. After this we want the mix set 14 to 2 and we're going to put everything into and create a combinator which we'll name Beat and inside it we're going to make a mixer. I'll explain what this is for later and next up make an instance of Kong. Right click create Kong Drum Designer. You can do a lot of what I'm about to do with the redrum if you've got an older version of Reason. Just look at the other dubstep tutorial for how to do that. But I've grown to like Kong since it has a few advantages over redrum. So first we should probably put in some samples since this isn't a dubstep remix of John Cage's 433. To put a sample into Kong, I'll initialize this to show you from the start. You select the pad you want, hit show drum and effects, and turn the drum module to NN Nano with the power of your mind. Or if you want any good at digital psychokinetic transfiguration, just select it from this drop down menu here. Then, just double click on the first row under Sample, and select the sample you want. Now I've already got a kit I've saved with all the samples in already. So, here's one I made earlier. Okay, so before I do anything, I've changed some of these drum output settings so that different outputs on the back send out different samples. So you've got the kit coming out of one load, snare coming out of another, and the hat coming out of another. I'll explain more about these later, I'm just doing that quickly to show you. So the kick itself is comprised of two different samples, both linked together. I just selected E here from the link pad group. See both of those pads have E selected, which means they both get triggered when one of the samples is played in the sequencer, saving messy MIDI later on. So we've got this one here, if I uh, take down the level of pad one, here in pad 5, this G kick, which I got from The Sound of Bounce, a really cool sample pack from primeloops.com. And along with that one, I've got one from the Boyner Band Free Christmas Kicks sample pack. You can get that from boynerband.com, with a lot of high end to give a bit of audibility to the kick. And as you can hear, it's what we in the industry call a bit of a J-Lo. The low end is disproportionately large and as such, awesome. So. To prevent any flabbiness from too many uncomplimentary low frequencies between the kicks, if we bring this one back up. Remember a big low end is good, but a flabby one is not quite as attractive, musically of course. I high passed this clicky kick with a filter here in FX slot 1. Filter frequency is at about one quarter of the way around, just to remove the low end completely on high pass mode. No resonance either. I've also turned the bassier kick right up in volume as you can see, whereas the clickier kick is slightly lower in volume. I've just shortened the kicks by reducing this decay value here in the amp envelope in the NN Nano instances to about the middle, just above the middle in some cases, because a nice tight low end is essential. Ahem. So, as you can hear, it's got the basic tonality we want. Next up, and it can be really difficult to get this bit right, is the snare. Again, two NN Nano instances linked together with a bit of tightness here in the decay from the amp envelope to stop the snares going on too long. And once again, one sample up here is for the top, if I uh, mute the bottom one. And the other sample, if I, you can also mute it by turning off, is the low end. And this low end snare is this iconic punchy snare you hear a lot. It's from my free snappy snare sample pack, also available on boynaband.com. And this constitutes the majority of the snare sound. If this isn't punchy enough, then your snare will sound thin and powerless like an anorexic woman in Saudi Arabia. 
Just kidding. I know anorexia is a culture-bound syndrome isolated to Western society, and Saudi Arabia clearly treats women as equals. Now, the top end isn't quite as important. If we turn it on, you can hear... It does add a little bit of extra tone. I just picked this really nice live-sounding snare. With a cool crack to it, again from the Snappy Snares sample pack. And this just adds a sharp attack and more interesting tonality to the snare to make it a little bit different. Now lastly... I've just got this one open hi-hat to drive the high end a little bit. Now the majority of the high end will come from a loop we're going to add later on. But this one here has been high pass filtered. I'll just get rid of this one, being messy. Been high pass filtered with this filter in FX slot 1. Much the same as I've done with the kick here. Just to remove any rumbling low end and mids that you find surprisingly often in these kinds of hi-hats. Take a listen. Here it's a lot clearer that way. And there we have Kong pretty much sorted, so I think it's time to actually make our beat. So let's go into the sequencer and start drawing something in. Make a four bar loop to start with. Hit the loop button so it loops around. And let's open it up and find our kick and snare in the C1 octave here. I usually have different tracks for kicks and snares, but this time I'll keep it on the same one since it makes it nice and easy to put together cool little fills later on. So, draw in a 4 bar pattern to begin with. We'll start with this nice slow plodding beat. A kick at the start of each bar and a snare on the third beat of each bar, giving that kind of pattern. Remember that since the snare in this kind of dubstep is going to be so massive, it's not really a good idea to have too many snares going on, especially when we come to add the reverb later. Go ahead and add some more interest with the kicks though. I'll chuck one in before the third kick here, so we've got... And then again on the fourth and just before it comes in. Then one at the end as well, just to lead it into the start of the loop again. Now for the hats, I'm going to make a new note lane so I can bring them in and out easily. And if we find them... There they are. I'll just put two on the first two beats of each bar. Just to accent the bass that will be there later. And for a small amount of variety, I'll put another one in here. Just before the fourth bar, so it leads in a little bit. A little bit later on in that. I'll zoom in. You can do that just by uh, dragging down here. There we go. So let's have a listen to our beats so far. Now it's plodderific, but as such, not too interesting. But if you want interesting percussion, you probably should do drum and bass instead of dubstep. If you have too much going on with the drums in dubstep, especially in this powerful style, it starts to lose its power. Anyway, it's still a bit sloppy and not quite as powerful as we'd like. So let's solve that problem and turn it from this into this in part two. 